About a month ago, I decided to purchase the Valve Index. This series will be a video journal of what I learn about VR. I'm discovering virtual reality. The first thing I did was look around Steam VR Home, as I'm sure most people do. Once the headset was correctly adjusted, it impressed me how easy it is to trick the brain. It felt like I was there. I just mentioned one of my two gripes with this experience so far. Putting the headset on correctly isn't easy. You need to position your eyes in the right spot, otherwise stuff is blurry. This issue is compounded when you have multiple people trying out VR on the same headset. Every time you use it, you need to spend a couple of minutes readjusting it. This problem doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but it needed saying. When talking about a lot of VR applications, it makes sense to make the distinction between games and experiences. Yeah, it sounds pretentious, but a lot of the stuff you do isn't really playing. That's why I started by experiencing Aperture Hand Labs. Robot detected. Welcome robot test subject to the Aperture Science Redacted. for the Classified. of Word Deleted. You will not be told the purpose of your test today. We will not be told why you are performing them. To preserve the integrity of this triple blind study, no one involved will have any idea why anyone is doing anything. For the purpose of this classified exercise, your barbed meat stripping claws have been replaced with hands. Please raise your hands up to your neck mounted weapons platform, which for the purpose of this exercise has been replaced with a face. Good. Please exit the elevator. Okay, so teleport. Lighting. Exit the elevator through the open elevator doors. Steam VR home. See ya. Exit the elevator through the only available opening that you could possibly exit from. More like this. Please exit the elevator. Oh, sorry, I can't walk. You're not further. even still here, are you? The fiction will pause briefly until you've returned from the bathroom. <laughs> nice. Hold on, hold on, see if he says Please the exit the elevator. Okay. Oh gosh. Good. You are now ready to begin the hand assisted non verbal machine human communication training. Please approach the training platform. Good. Deploying uh, first you? exercise. I don't want this. What are you? Hello, I am Frank, a friendly human. I like you, so I am you're waving not, not to human. you. To consummate this wave exchange, raise your hand, open it, then swing it gently from side to side. That is waving. It means you like me, like I like good. We are now bonded in eternal friendship. Ah! Good. No. Deploying next exercise. What is that? I'm Alan. Hey, Alan. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna shake my fist. This is... Hello, it is me again, Friendly Frank. Hello, Will Friendly you Frank. It? After I only wanted to be your friend. I didn't want to murder I you. I clawed my way out of that pit of despair with a singular purpose. I'm sorry. To come what face to doing? face with I'm you once sorry. more and finally exact more friendship. Yay. Now, give Good. me five. Good. Now, a five. Good. Now for the third in our four series hi-fi panel. Down low. Deception detected. Too slow. <laughs> I have deceived you. Did you really think Friendly Frank survived that fall? He's dead. You killed him. No, I am Deceptive Devin. Or is it Kevin? It's not. I or can't is it? away. I propose a game of deceit. It is a game as old as hands. A gripping trial of handly cunning called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Are you ready to be deceived? No? Good. On three. Ready? One, two, three. All Done. paper. Two master strategists of deception. Locked in the battle of deceptive wicks. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Ah, I oh, win. Scissors. Bah, you win. Let's go again. Best two out of three. Ready? Three. three. Paper, I mean rock. Yes, I definitely mean rock. I win. Nobody recorded that, did they? No. I'm recording right Ooh, now. I won. Loser. Good. I can Deploying kill people. Next exercise. 
been hearing a lot of good things about your hands. I know, they're pretty good. How about this time, you give me a real handshake. A nice, firm, strong handshake. Okay. Really squeeze it, I can take it. Really squeeze it. Sound good? Good. <laughs> Let's shake on it. I'm gonna go ahead and say I appreciate your safety. <laughs> You broke my arm! You're still holding it, you monster! Put it back! No, it's deceptive De Devon? Hello, friend. All I ever wanted was your friendship. That's awesome. But instead, you threw me away into a bottomless pit. And at the bottom of that pit, among these discarded robots, I found something even better than your friendship. This gun. Now you have no choice but to be my friend. And as your friend, I want to ask you one last friendly favor. Free me! Or I will shoot you. Uh, you no think thanks. Frank is bluffing? That was merely a demonstration. Do not make me demonstrate again. Because now Frank has some sense of how this gun works. And the next time, I will not accidentally miss you. Now, pull open the drawer to your right and remove the envelope inside. Frank intends to get busy. Good. Now reach into the drawer and grab the hood. Now tear the envelope open. You cannot reveal the envelope's content. Inside the envelope is a very, very, almost absurdly large key. Do not let its comical appearance deceive you. Its purpose, it good. Now free me, or so help me, I will... I... Oh, who is friendly Frank kidding? No more guns. I am asking you, as a friend, please... What the hell is that? Friendly Frank. Your friend. Oh, Place the key in the hole labeled Core Escape to complete Core Escape sequence. Or, place the key in the hole labeled Destroy Core to destroy the core. Hmm. Friendly Frank was unaware that core destruction was an option and is beginning to regret holding you at gunpoint. Yeah. Also throwing away my gun. Yeah, there you are. What happens when I just like... Place the key in the hole labeled Core Escape to complete Core Escape sequence. Or... Place the key in the hole labeled Destroy Core to take the moral high ground and destroy the core. Is pleading with you not to kill. Please don't get Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and step up here. Press button. Go to uh, avatars. And uh, now we can like discuss with me in front of you here. I haven't correctly positioned that thing there in, in my body just there I can't actually touch it because you know my physical body's there but this is me this is what I look like in VR now so uh so yeah it's pretty cool uh that was Aperture Hand Labs not bad game uh quite fun actually I mean it's not really a game it's more of a experience as I said in the voiceover thing but honestly you know not bad uh, I believe the next part of the video will be me checking out uh, the lab, which came out 2017, possibly 2016. So it's pretty old, you know? So uh, enjoy that. Uh, I think the next video, though, will be... Hold on, can I do it? Yeah, it'll be Spider-Man stuff. Zoop, zoop, zap, zap, zoop, babbly, boop, beep, bap, boop, beep, bap. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Goodbye. Finger tracking on the Valve Index controllers is really great. Obviously I've only ever used the Knuckles, so I can't compare to the Vive ones, but the games that have finger tracking feel way more immersive than the ones that don't. Let's have a look at the experiences, or as they call them, experiments. The first thing I saw was postcards, which is multiple different scenes which have been scanned into VR. This technology is cool and all, but I only see it being useful to preview places before going to them. The dog isn't that cool because you can't feel it, and that's a crucial thing for me.
human medical scan shows off the potential of VR when it comes to working. I doubt it will be used before AR replaces VR, but hey, neat tech, bro. A solar system allows you to visualize the solar system and even yeet planets into the sun. Secret Shop takes place in the Dota universe, and I have to say, it is so immersive. Look at this little dude who's scared of the light. Look at this big dude who's scared of... Wait, no, I'm scared of him. Robot Repair takes place in the Portal universe, and it's great. GLaDOS teases us at the end with playing a VR Portal game, and swiftly cockblocks you. Uh, Valve have actually stated they tried bringing Portal to VR, but then they found it too nauseating. You can colour me a disappointed shade of grey. Time to get into the actual games. The first real VR game I played was Longbow, and I thought it was really difficult, but it turns out I'm just bad. A friend of mine found a lot of enjoyment from this one. Next up, Slingshot, where you have to shoot Aperture Science cores to cause as much damage as possible. Pretty fun, but if you suck it doesn't really last that long. Finally, we end this video on Zortex. It's a space shooter. I find this really fun, but once again challenging. I think it's just me. VR makes you use your body way more than normal gaming, and I'm a fat bastard, so I have difficulty. Anyway, uh, would I say VR is worth getting into so far? If you're like me and can't really afford it, no. Unless you're weird like me and this stuff makes you all giddy. Watching other people on VR also adds a whole lot of value. Anyway, this has been episode 1 of Discovering Virtual Reality. Thanks for watching! Setup time. VR experiments. Finger tracking.